Hey guys, Jordan Brill here. I just got myself a new Sterling Stingray 5HH bass guitar and I thought it'd be fun to do a little bit of an unboxing and review together. Why did I get myself a bass guitar? Well, I've been doing a lot more home recording lately and projects for YouTube making guitar covers. By the way, you can check out one of my covers right here. So I've been using backing tracks that I can find online or trying to use the Moses app on my phone to tailor backing tracks to my needs, but they haven't always been that great. So I decided, why not just make backing tracks myself? To do that, I need a bass. I started shopping online trying to find out what basses were available at what price point. I'm not a bass player and I don't need anything high end, so I was looking at the lower price point moving more expensive. I was looking at what basses are available for what I need. I was looking between a four and a five string bass. Four strings are very common and easy to come by, but I know from experience that I like that fifth string, having that low B, trying to hit a low D, C, something like that for some of these rock and country tunes. I talked to one of my previous bass players and he said, if you're only gonna get one bass, get a five string instead of having to get a four and then get a five again later. So I started looking at five string basses, looking at the least expensive to most expensive. During the search, I found Sterling made a series of basses. I decided that's the brand I'm going to go with. Why did I decide on a Sterling model bass? Well, it all comes down to that I'm a guitar player and I've always been an Eddie Van Halen fan. Back in the early 90s, Eddie Van Halen played on an Ernie Ball Music Man Eddie Van Halen model guitar. This is always a dream guitar of mine. I love the way it looks, body style, the Floyd Rose. It's always a guitar that I wanted. In the early 2010s, I bought myself an Ernie Ball Music Man Axis. This is basically the Eddie Van Halen model guitar with a very few slight changes. This has been my most favorite guitar and my primary guitar for the last 12 years. Several years ago, my at the time bass player called me and said that he was at a guitar center and they had the Sterling model guitar of my Axis on clearance. He wanted to know if I wanted to get it. And I said, yeah, why not? If it's half as good as, as my Axis, it's still gonna be a pretty good guitar. So he picked it up for me, brought it home, and we compared my Ernie Ball Axis, a $2,000 guitar, to the Sterling AX40, which I believe I bought on clearance for 280 bucks. We compared the two of them, and for almost a tenth of the price of the Ernie Ball, the Sterling pulled its weight pretty good. Still not as good, but it's still pretty dang good guitar for, for the price that it was. So when I was searching for basses, I found Sterlings. That's what I, I decided to go with. The Sterlings came in at a pr very reasonable price range. They started with a four string Stingray for $299. And I thought that's perfect. I could do everything I need to do with that. Doing a little bit more looking for $349, they had a five string Stingray bass. And I thought, okay, that's pretty good. That's maybe what I'll go for. Doing a little bit more looking, I found that they had a five string Stingray dual humbucker bass for $3.99. It has all the bells and whistles that I could need plus some for my home recording projects and a very reasonable price. So that's the bass that I went with. Let's unbox it and take a look. All right, so here we are with the Sterling by Music Man box. There's a slight crease around the box. Looks like it might've taken a little bit of a a hit in shipping. Let's hope everything's all right on the inside. Let's open it up and see what we have inside. Some cardboard packaging. Upon first inspection, the uh, box is a lot lighter than I would expect. Although this seems pretty tight. I would say that that's some nice bracing that they put around the neck inside the box to make sure it doesn't shift around. That's nice. The typical foam packaging, foam sleeve that uh, is wrapped around. Rubber band. A 
And here it is. Inspection card. Serial number. All the tuning pegs still have some uh, plastic wrap on them. The headstock. I don't know if we can see that here yet. Might have to take another photo of it. Sterling by Music Man Stingray 5. This is the sub-series base. The neck feels pretty good. Might need a little bit of a touch-up with the fret work on it, but I live in a very dry climate, so that doesn't surprise me that it has a little bit of uh, fret sprout to it. Needs a little bit of a tune. But feels nice, five-way pickup selector. You have a volume and a treble and bass. I'm not sure which one is which offhand. They're, they are notched in the middle, so you get uh, zero, and then there's the gain and minus for the bass and treble. It's a very nice finish. Got a little bit of a metallic flake to it. It is a active preamp on the back with the nine volt in there and hooked up. Sterling by Music Man neck plate. Made in Indonesia. It has the truss rod adjustment at the base of the neck. I always like that. It's a lot easier to get to than trying to remove the, the plate on the headstock and get a wrench in there. This is much easier. Nice heavy duty bridge. Looks good. Hey guys, so I've had a chance to sit down, play the bass a little bit, get familiar with it, get comfortable with it. Uh, I've got it plugged into my preamp, which I'm using a Fractal XFX for my preamp to do my recordings. Using my PreSonus Studio Live 1642 as my audio interface, and I'm using PreSonus Studio One as my DAW. This gave me a chance to start dialing in the bass, see how it feels, see how it sounds, and just at least get started with everything. Right now I'm plugged into the Axe FX with no amps or cab blocks active, just using it as a straight bypass all the way through into my audio interface. Let's go through with a quick bass line through all five pickup positions in this bypass patch. Middle position. And bridge position. Now let's go through a preset using an Ampeg SV bass rig. Now let's go through a preset that has a second amp block on it to give us a little bit more grit. Overall, 
I'm really liking the space and happy with my decision. I'm finding my favorite positions are using both humbuckers in the middle position or using the bridge pickup at the far back. It's a very cosmetic pleasing bass. It's a very sharp looking bass guitar. Has a little bit of a marble or bird's eye maple look to the headstock that you can see on the front and the back and it almost follows down the neck with a little bit more of a flame look to it. Very beautiful woods for the price of this bass. Another thing I really like cosmetically about this bass is the three ply pick guard. It's a very subtle change, but the white, black, white layers of the pick guard just add that little bit of extra pop to the bass. That's usually somewhere something that Fender would cut corners on on a bass on an instrument at this price and just use a single ply pick guard. I had my dad over last weekend to celebrate Father's Day, and he's also a veteran musician, and while he was here, I showed him my new bass guitar. He was very pleased with it and impressed for it for only being a $400 bass. His words, to quote, were, that's a lot of bass for 400 bucks. Overall, I'm very pleased with this bass and very happy with my purchase. I'm looking forward to getting to be a better bass player and using it in my future recordings. Thanks for checking this out, and I hope you look forward to more content from me soon.